Hello and welcome to Inside the Americas here on France 24. On the show today, red flag laws have been used thousands of times in the U.S. to take guns away from citizens deemed dangerous. But in Colorado, some officers say the laws are unconstitutional and they won't enforce them. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos pledges billions to combat climate change. But is it philanthropy or PR cleanup after his company was criticized from the inside for its own carbon footprint? And a tiny California newspaper saved by an unlikely hero. The state's oldest weekly paper will be taken over by a 71-year-old local retiree. First up, they're called red flag gun laws. They allow for firearms to be temporarily taken away from people in the U.S. if a family member or police believe they present a danger. As mass shootings continue to claim lives, several states are passing red flag laws, the latest being Colorado. But several sheriffs there say it's unconstitutional and they won't obey it. Our colleagues at France Do report. A badge a Glock, and a Stetson hat. Sheriff Shannon Byerly represents the law, but this time he is vowing to disobey it. Custer County, Colorado, population 5,000. Here in Westcliff, Sheriff Byerly knows every resident. Most of them are armed. Brock, what's going on, buddy? I hope that this is not going to... Do you carry a gun? No, I uh, never carry a gun, ever. I want any citizen who wants to carry one to carry one anytime they want to. But a new law in the state of Colorado has added certain conditions to the right to bear arms. The law allows family members or law enforcement to ask a judge to temporarily remove guns from the possession of someone deemed an extreme risk to themselves or others. Sheriff Byerly says he will not take an individual's guns as a precaution. The reason that I don't believe in the, the ERPO or red flag law, and I don't believe that it's lawful, is because of the very clear violations of the Constitution. In the United States, sheriffs are elected, and the residents of Westcliff support their good. sheriff. A hundred percent. We love our show. Yeah, I, I worked hard to get this guy elected the first time. <laughs> These residents say the law is unacceptable and also too vague. That is true to some extent. The law only targets those, quote, deemed to be an extreme risk. This red flag law was written so vague that you could call in a report to somebody's dog and that sheriff would have to investigate it. They found out Others say the, the law United is a blatant violation yeah. of their constitutional right to bear arms. Our founders wanted to protect the country from having that from our government. This is so we have the right to protect ourselves against the tyrannical government if our government should get out of line. And Sheriff Byerly believes guns are never responsible. We don't blame um, pencils for misspelled words. We don't blame uh, forks. Yeah, forks because we're too fat. It's people and their behaviors and their attitudes. And so Across the country, dozens of sheriffs have refused to enforce various red flag laws. Tom Sullivan is behind the Colorado red flag law. His son Alex died in a mass shooting in 2012. He was 27 years old. The state representative says the sheriff's reactions don't scare him. It is a, a minority, and it's a very loud minority, but um, we are converting more and more people, uh, more and more people um, understand. Back in Westcliff, residents of the small town, as well as the sheriff, say the law is not only unconstitutional, it's also useless. The ERPO bill that's been in place would have zero effect on mass shootings in the United wow. States or in Colorado because those people obtained guns outside of lawful means and there were no, there were, there was never any signs. But statistics are a little more nuanced. 75% of mass shooters in the United States got their guns legally and more than half of them showed warning signs before committing a shooting. 
The goal of the red flag law is to encourage citizens to report warning signs, but these residents say it's not worth giving up their freedoms. I don't no. think it's worth our liberty to save. It, it sounds hard to say, but I don't think one individual is worth more than everybody. Are you, you know? sure of that? I am sure, yes. I, I will come down on the side of liberty every time. The law has been in effect for six weeks, and Sheriff Byerly has not yet had to enforce it. He says he will refuse to do so and is willing to face the legal consequences. Was Harvey Weinstein a predator, using his powerful Hollywood status to take advantage of women, or were his sexual relationships consensual, as his defense team argues? That's the decision a New York jury now has to make. After closing statements from both sides, jurors are currently deliberating the five counts of sexual assault against Weinstein. The disgraced movie mogul could face life in prison if the seven men and five women convict. More than 80 women have accused Weinstein of sexual misconduct, but the trial is based on charges related to just two. Next, Mexico recorded more than 1,000 femicide victims last year, although experts believe the true figure may be much higher. The latest case to capture the public's attention is the murder of a seven-year-old girl. Reported missing earlier in February, her body was found southeast of the capital, showing signs of torture. And her death is shining a spotlight on the nation's problem of violence against women. The tears and pain of a community. Thousands in Mexico City came out to demand justice for, and to later rest, a seven-year-old girl. Fatima was abducted on February 11th and then tortured and murdered. These are the last images of her leaving school with a stranger. Police are still investigating the child's assassination, but her case has created national outrage and added to an ongoing movement protesting the abuse and killing of women and girls in Mexico. There's fear for the children. It's scary not knowing if something might happen to them. They are increasingly cruel with women, and it's not fair that there is this sort of violence. The young girl's murder comes on the heels of a series of others. For just a few days earlier, a 25-year-old was mutilated and killed by her boyfriend. Clad in black and demanding government action against femicides, protesters chanted outside the presidential palace. They've criticized President Oberdor for not doing enough and for brushing off the issue. He says he's listening. Everything that contributes to getting peace in the country, I'm for it. We're going to keep on helping with everything. The nation's lower house of Congress slightly increased prison sentences for femicides and sexual abuse of minors on Tuesday. In Mexico, an average of 10 women are thought to be killed every day. And 60 percent of women say they've been the victim of sexual violence. This week's number is $10 billion. That's the amount Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos says he will commit to fund scientists, activists, and other groups fighting climate change. The announcement comes after Amazon has faced criticism from its own employees for being too slow to reduce its carbon footprint. Yuka Royer with the story. It's the latest climate pledge to come from Amazon's boss, to the tune of $10 billion. Jeff Bezos says the new fund will start unlocking money in the summer to help scientists, activists and NGOs continue their efforts to protect our environment. I want to work alongside others both to amplify known ways and to explore new ways of fighting the devastating impact of climate change on this planet we all share. Bezos is worth around $130 billion, and the new fund represents about 8 percent of his fortune. Amazon has been keen to show its commitment. Last year, the e-commerce giant co-founded the Climate Pledge with the goal of becoming carbon neutral by 2040. The project also called for investing $100 million in reforestation projects and ordering 100,000 fully electric delivery vehicles. Its latest battery-powered fleet Rickshaws rolled out in India last month. 
Yet the online heavyweight has faced scrutiny over how much it is doing to reduce its carbon footprint while shipping 10 billion items a year and operating massive cloud servers. It has faced walkouts and staff rebellion, with some defying corporate policy and openly criticizing Amazon's slow progress in cutting emissions. Bezos is also the founder of rocket company Blue Origin, which aims to take tourists to the moon by mid-decade. That project also drew criticism over its carbon emissions. And finally, don't stop the presses. In northeast California, a small town in the Sierra Nevada mountains has been rejoicing after its local paper was saved. With a print run of just 2,400 copies, Downeyville's paper is also nearly completely the work of just one resident, as Solange Mouzon explains. Tucked in the Sierras, the gold rush town of Downeyville is home to just a few hundred souls and California's oldest weekly newspaper, The Mountain Messenger. It's been running off the presses since 1853. Mark Twain even wrote a few articles for the weekly, but its editor, Don Russell, wanted to retire. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> And the messenger was expected to shut its doors. But then... Free at last! <laughs> a buyer was finally found. And I'm just delighted that I found somebody stupid enough to take it over. <laughs> Carl Butts, a retired programmer, decided he'd rather save the paper than go on another vacation. Then I thought, God, if I'm going around the world and the paper's gone, I'm going to feel guilty for the rest of my life. Pigeon Found was the humorous headline when the messenger announced its 26th editor. For Butts knows he'll have to self-finance some of the paper's losses. This past year, the bank went away. The gas station's been closed. You know, the, the town is like dying. Local papers can be something to bind together a community. In the past 15 years, one in five local papers in the United States have shut down. But the Downeyville Mountain Messenger, for now, still lives on. That's it for this edition of Inside the Americas. Thank you, and see you next time here on France 24. From North to South Africa, from Bamako to Nairobi, from Accra to Mogadishu. Bringing you all the political, economic, cultural and social news from Africa for a better insight into an ever-changing continent. Across Africa, presented by Georgia Calvin-Smith on France 24 and France24.com.